Like many regions of Ghana, the Upper West is a place many people struggle to make ends meet. According to a 2015 Ghana Poverty Mapping Report, the region has the highest poverty rate. Poverty incidence is pegged at 70% in this part of the country. There is however concern that the government has committed various sums of money from the country's oil revenues to projects that never got done or were only half completed. We are in the capital, Wa, to investigate these ghost projects. In December 2008, government awarded a contract worth over 800,000 CDs to a local contractor, Adam Wala, to rehabilitate an irrigation dam at Nakore in the Upper West region. A project status implementation report from the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority dated February 13, 2019 indicates that the rehabilitation work is completed. But Joy News' checks at the dam site reveal this is inaccurate. Eleven years after this contract was awarded, the wall meant to hold the water in the dam is yet to be constructed. Pensive-looking Osman Ibrahim is former assembly member of Nakore. He says the only work done by the contractor was to place boulders at the banks of a dam and a pipeline that channels water from one point of a dam to the other. At the first time, he started the construction on June, which the heavy rain was falling. So some of the machines cannot work. One is always got to decide to carry other stones or the sand to come and fill, the gravel to come and fill the wall. It will see it go down. And at the end, the contractor always say that he haven't gotten money, that government haven't paid him. Because the wall is not finished. And the irrigation too has not been finished. The lanes that the water will pass has not been done. A lot of challenges are still in the dam. In the dry season, farmers here at Nakore are helpless. The farms are lying fallow and dry. The source of water is miles away. Their dam was their hope, but it's not been completed to channel water to their farmlands. Osman Ibrahim again. There are a lot of people who cannot farm. And there are some people too who are old, who have got uh, old age. So, if the irrigation, dam, uh, irrigation was to be done, some of the old men and uh, some of the women who cannot go far to farm, they can also come and have dry season gardens and also get something to eat, also get something in their pocket to help their family. One of such farmers who are unable to plant in the lean season because of a lack of water is 74-year-old Pusuna Abudu. He couldn't store any grains for the dry season because flood waters destroyed his crops. He doesn't know where his family's next meal will come from. By this time, we can't get anything to do again. And now the place is too dried, so we can't do anything more than that unless we sit down in the house just free. Earlier, there were floods which destroyed your food crops. How badly were you affected by that? Oh, flood? it was very bad. It was very bad. They affect all our this corn, and we couldn't enjoy with that. How, how do you intend to feed your family and yourself then? In the name of God, that will make us to be a person who won't chop grass or flowers. So we just manage to get something to feed ourselves. How many children do you have? I think my children are nine. The plight of Pusuna and other farmers in Nakore gives credence to the suggestion that the failure of appropriate authorities to do their work leaves ordinary people suffering. Here, a piece of a national cake meant for poor farmers in this district hasn't been used for the purpose it was meant for. In 2011, Parliament passed the Petroleum Management Act that mandates that up to 70% of oil proceeds go into the national budget. 
The law directs that these funds should be channeled to development in key sectors such as education, health and water infrastructure, among others. But a 2017 project inspections report by PIAC revealed that 50% of all oil-funded projects in three regions, Upper East, Upper West and Northern, are now ghost projects. My name is Kwete Nate, and in this edition of Hotline, I'm following up on these projects. Nakore is not the only community where government allocated oil funds to help farmers. In 2008, 75,000 CDs was disbursed for the rehabilitation of irrigation dam at Duri in the Upper West region. Eleven years on, it's only a concrete wall that was constructed by the contractor JK Royal Friends Ghana Limited. Though oil monies have been budgeted for it, all I see here at Duri is a dam swamped by overgrown weeds. Solomon Maswaza is assembly member of a Nasahiri electoral area. He is unhappy with how it's affecting farmers in Duri. The dam project was allocated actually. We heard of the project, but we don't know the source of the funds. And then we don't even know the contractor who is at the size. The project is not done. It is just this block you can see here. That's the bridge you can see here. That's the only work that I have done. The contractor who was awarded the rehabilitation of Nakore Dam has agreed to meet me. I head to Tichima in the Bonohafu region. I meet Adam Wala, a tall, frail looking old man. He claims he couldn't complete the project because he did not receive all the funds he needed for the job before the contract was abrogated. <laughs> I see contract to be sure in Sunny Channel because Minamisha say a German abadris is a Bianco. Now, how say Motiba Mangania, Namenoho, Mimboa Mimui, TS Simino, Yabua, Yam Fasica Bian Mamma, Kajuka, the animal, or Namedia Jumano. Scano Yet be my dear, Yet be Ustica, the air chairman, or Namedia Jumano, Atukanin and Trier. Documents cited by Joy News from the National Investment Bank and dated January 12 indicate that Adam Walla Enterprise Limited's contract was terminated because the contractor performed below expectation. This runs contrary to the Irrigation Development Authority's claim that the 800,000 city project has been completed. The NIB report also tasks the Irrigation Development Authority to come up with an estimate of the additional funds necessary for completion of a project and for the National Investment Bank to make the funds available. While Central Member of Parliament Rashid Popo was part of a meeting that reviewed the status of a Nakore irrigation dam project, he explains why the funds have not been released by NIB. My interest in the project was to see that it's my constituency and the people where they need water, they need the, 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 the the, the, the animals were suffering. They needed something that will allow them to have um, water source for their, for their animals. And then to do irrigation dumping, irrigation farming. So my insistence on helping him was just on those bases. But shortly after he refused it, and I washed my hands and went away, he came back to me asking me to go back again and then do the whole negotiation with the people and tell them that they themselves, they should raise a certificate and pay him before he could do the job. I said, my dear, I, it is impossible for me to go back and tell them this one. There was a negotiation you agreed to, you turn back on the negotiation. If you want, you can, you can go back on it. I'm feeling shy to go back and call people together and say I will do that. And that was the point I left him. Improving irrigation system for farmers is not the only area oil monies have been misused. According to the Public Interest Accountability Committee in 2017, there were 21 roads that were awarded in the Greater Accra 
Ashanti, Eastern and Volta regions. Over 81 million CDs of oil money was used. By the time the project was done, it had cost the taxpayer over 395 million CDs. Dr. Steve Mantiao is chairman of a committee. There were projects that were non-existent and there were projects that were had been executed but shortly. Um, the, the sad projects you find largely that they were deteriorating uh, barely a year or two into their completion, which speaks to uh, poor quality of, of project execution. Um, there were also issues that uh, relating to projects that are stalled um, and, 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 and therefore uh, making nonsense uh, of, of the monies expended because really the project beneficiaries um, were not in a position to make use of the project because they were not completed. I am here at Bremai and heading towards Sepe Dote in the Ashanti region. In 2011, government awarded the rehabilitation of a Bremai UGC and Sepe Dote main road to Coffee Job Company Limited. The original contract sum was over 4.9 million CDs. By the time the project was completed in 2014, the figure had shot up to over 8.7 million CDs according to a 2017 PIAC inspections report. This is a 77% increase in the project cost. But motorists who use the road are unhappy with the poor quality of work. <laughs> In 2012, Atachi Construction was awarded a contract to complete the Edukrum area roads within 10 months. The original contract sum was $3.3 million. But by the time the contractor completed the road, the final certified amount had shot up to 4.8 million CDs. Same can be said of a partial reconstruction of Trum Junction Somanya Oduma Sukmaun Road. The contract was awarded to First Sky Limited in 2014. Two years after completion, Piak reveals that the initial contract sum of 30.8 million CDs has been revised to 35.4 million CDs, mainly due to delays in completing the project. But as I drive on the stretch in tracking the oil cash, I spot several potholes barely three years after its completion. There are many more of such road projects. With the original cost witnessing revision like emergency works for the upgrading of a whole Adidome road and the reconstruction of the Harvard Bando Road. But none has attracted political attention like the Eastern Corridor Project. President Ekufado in 2018 made a political joke about his inability to sleep while using the road because his fiercest rival, former President John Mahama, had failed to complete the road. He has promised to fix the road, but no timelines were given. Throughout our country, I the poor say, in 2016, when we were on the campaign, I came here. I also went to the, vault, the western region, this famous eastern corridor. And I said that President Mahama was saying that his, the period of his office had seen infrastructural development that we had never seen in Ghana before unprecedented infrastructural development. I hope you remember this expression, unprecedented. And then I said, I don't see this unprecedented development. Everywhere I go, I'm on bad roads. He said, I was asleep on the road, and that is why I didn't see the good development that had taken place. Today, I've come on the Eastern Corridor Road. And I didn't sleep one inch. I couldn't sleep. Boom, 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 boom. How can I sleep on this road? And 
that's why I want to go out to see for myself what is going on. We're going to fix it. And what Kwata has told you is going to fix it. We are going to fix it. And it will not be for anybody to say whether somebody is asleep or not asleep. They will see that the road has been fixed. It will not be talk. The Asikuma Junction Hohoe section of the Eastern Corridor project is becoming one of the expensive stretches to construct. The road project started in 2011, and due to delays in release of funds, cost of a project has increased from 105.7 million CDs to 135.7 million CDs. The road is dusty and bumpy. Francis Jidaka is a commercial driver who uses the road. The poor nature of the stretch has increased the maintenance cost of his vehicle. The road is not good. Even we, the drivers, we are suffering. We are very, very suffering. So we need the government to do something about it. Last year, the Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesi Amakwata, announced that despite the fact that the government has been able to pay 3 billion CDs arrears from road construction after taking over power, there are still some outstanding arrears to be cleared and the ministry will do everything possible to clear the remaining areas in 2019. The Public Interest Accountability Committee argues that one of the ways to misappropriate the oil fans is to delay the projects to allow for variations in the original costs. If you allocate monies to road projects and they are inadequate in completing the projects, chances are that by the time you return to those projects with additional funds to continue, the roads would have deteriorated and so you have to do some cost variations and go back to do work that was completed before the, the project came to a standstill. There was a particular case of a, uh, is it, is it um, Prekum's Sampa Road where a project estimated to cost something in excess of 40 million Ghana cities had only 3 million allocated to it. What impact will 3 million make on the 40 million Ghana cities project? But curiously, the allocation was done in an election year, 2016, ostensibly to deceive project beneficiaries and to create the impression that government was going to resume road construction and complete the road for them. But one man who understands the reality on the ground is the chairman of a road contractors association, David Ato Agro. He says over the last decade, government doesn't pay them on time and that explains why many road projects have stalled and are accumulating interests. In every contract, there's a cash flow that is accompanying it, which controls the cost. And then from there, there's quality control. So all these three, the three major, the three, three major things, mm. should give you a quality job. The final finish will be, be very, very well done. But then we don't follow all these things. You start, you go and borrow money from the bank. You start the project. Probably you are done about 20 to 30 percent. Then you issue the first interim certificate. Probably you have cleared the road, formed the road, done the sub base. Then you, you apply for payment because the government has not given you anything. But mm -hmm. that has been stopped about 10 years ago. Yeah. So then you have to wait sometimes a whole year before the, that payment comes. Meanwhile, we cannot close the road. An inspection report by PIAC reveals that over 50% of school projects funded by oil money showed signs of serious deterioration in less than three years after completion. At Apeja in the eastern region, this six-unit classroom block at Apeja SDA Primary School in East Akim District is almost sinking. There are gaping holes in the library block and the structure showed serious signs of damage aside from the fact that it was sinking and it could collapse at any time looking at its state. The unstable nature of the structure was life-threatening to the students, teachers and other users of the facility. Government spent over 130,000 petroleum revenue on the Apidra SDA Primary School. Yana Lizard Quetrene Wawa Ebaha 
In 2011, government awarded a contract of over 58,000 CDs and a project to provide additional classroom facilities for the school. The building is yet to be completed, but portions of the block have developed cracks. Assistant head teacher of Apenkro JHS Amwako Sapong George is concerned about the progress of work done by the contractor, but he's more worried about the dust teachers and pupils have to endure every day. It has left with some students and also some dressings on the pillars, especially on the classrooms. We have a lot of dust in the room and as such it needs to be screened. Not all. The windows and the doors also are not yet fixed. All these need to be addressed. How is it affecting teaching and learning? Yeah. Because of the, a lot of the dust, when the children come to school, every day, unless they wash their uniforms, because as they are playing in the room, they become dirty, they dirty the, the, themselves, and they have to wash all their items every day before school, and also affect teaching. The school authorities tell me the contractor says the project has stalled because government hasn't paid for the work done. Same story has been told at the Begro Senior High School in the Eastern Region. In 2010, Mofeg Company Limited was awarded a contract to rehabilitate the Science Resource Center of a Begro Senior High School. The contract was expected to have been completed in four months. But nine years after, all I see is a pale structure with no windows and doors. Headmaster of Begro Senior High School, Daniel Mensa, reveals the contractor abandoned the site after starting initial terrazzo works on the building. As we speak, it has been difficult to trace the contractor. He has never been back since he abandoned the project way back in 2010. And all attempts to get to him has proved futile and indeed since he has not resumed uh, work the project is at a standstill but my appeal to the government is that they should come and help us it is very very urgent to come and fix this uh, project and ensure that it is actually completed to make the teaching and learning a very comfortable and attractive one. The initial contract sum for the project was over 130,000 CDs. The regional ASL consultant Frimpong Jinfi told Piak that government has paid the contractor 52,765 CDs. This was on April 9, 2013. But the project is abandoned. Now science students like Gabriel Go have to bear the brunt. That has become one of our major problems here in the school. And it's like we don't have the facility, but we have the equipment, which the equipment are being stored in a room. But supposing we, if we are to have the facility, it will be able to be equipped with the instrument. And now, because we don't have the facility and it's not being equipped, we are not able to have um, access to the equipment in order for us to be convenient with them. And out of that, because, because of this, now that we, have, um, we are getting to our final exams right, mm -hmm. we are now thinking of how to even go about our particles. In the northern region, school authorities at the Bagabaga College of Education are facing a similar ordeal. The low power supply to the college compelled government to award an upgrading of electrical power supply contracts in 2013 to John D. Electricals. It was worth 248,245 CDs. But till date, a transformer which was meant to be installed to step up the voltage supply to the College of Education 
is sitting at the administrative block of the institution while the school suffers. Dr. Amudu Isa Abudu is the principal of the Bagabaga College of Education. They agree to bring a transformer and then to give a street light and then reinforce the wiring system in the college. This is exactly what uh, the contractor was supposed to do. He brought uh, electric poles and then uh, there was a wire and then some street light bulbs and then a transformer. The transformer has not been mounted. If you go out, you see it lying down there. The wires were not completed, but they had put on the electric street bulbs, which never lasted for uh, three months. Back in the Shanti region, a project to address the large number of admissions into the KNUST School of Medical Sciences, the university decided to construct a teaching hospital administration block. But eight years after the contract was awarded, the structure has been abandoned. It has become a white elephant engulfed with weeds and debris. The original contract sum for the project was estimated to be 6 million CDs and was later revised to about 18 million CDs due to delays in completion. Now, the cost of a project stands at 21 million CDs. In all my tours across the country, I am yet to come across a project funded with oil money where the people are impressed with value for money. Chairman of PIAC, Dr. Steve Mantial, believes more needs to be done. You consider the fact that over a period of about seven to eight years, um, this country has earned as much as five billion dollars. And yet we cannot pinpoint what exactly this five billion dollars has done for this country. Especially against the backdrop that of the fact that um, Kutuka International Airport Terminal 3 was constructed at a cost of about $350 million. It means that our total income from petroleum as a country could have put up close to five Kutuka International Airport Terminal 3. And yet we are unable to pinpoint what oil revenues have done for this country. Clearly, as government doles out millions of CDs from a finite wealth, more needs to be done to ensure the oil wealth becomes a blessing and not a curse. For Hotline Documentary, Kwete Nate, reporting.